It was a beautiful sunny morning. Dad and the older boys had done the work around the place and had gone to the fields. Mama was left to tend the house and garden and us younger kids, me, Shirley, and Toby. The chickens had been fed and were scratching and clucking all over the yard. I had finished my chores and was playing in the woodlot. Now, I was pretty alert to most things, and looking down the tracks, what did I see? A figure was coming with a pole over his shoulder, with a little bundle tied to the end of it. Now, living so close to the train tracks that ran in front of our house through our field, we could expect to see most anything or anybody. My heart was pounding, and I was scared. It seemed like every time something exciting or scary happened, the men folk were always away. I went running to the house calling, Mama, Mama, a hobo is coming. I knew she was a little scared too. Go inside with Shirley, Mary, and close the door. I'll start fixing him some leftover biscuits with some molasses and, well, whatever else I can find. I ran to the front room that had a big window so I could watch him. He came through the field gate, across the dirt road, and up the bank to our house. He knocked on the door, and Mama peeped out. Ma'am, would you happen to have anything to eat? I'll see, she said, and closed the door. She would never let them in our house. She put the scraps into a bag, which we called a poke, and handed it to him with a shaking hand through the door. He thanked her and went his way back down the bank, across the road and through the field gate, and onto the tracks north toward mill camp. We didn't have a lot to spare. Remember, this was during the Depression years, but Mama gave him what was left over from breakfast. She often quoted what it says in the book of Hebrews. You never know, she said, when you may be entertaining angels unaware. It seemed like every hobo that walked the tracks came to our house for a handout, and this went on all summer long. Mama said they chose that lifestyle to hop trains and travel and to see the world. It seemed like railroad tracks and hobos just went together. I always wondered what was in their bundle. A change of clothes, I suppose. When Dad and the boys came home, we had a story to tell of our angels unaware. We were also visited by gypsies and fortune tellers. One evening after supper, Dad was in the field hoeing sweet potatoes and along came a long line of cars full of gypsies. They stopped and wanted to tell Dad's fortune. For money, of course. Now, Dad didn't believe in fortune tellers and they finally went on down the road. But they all scared me half to death. And on top of this, our poor dog started having running fits and headed for the house. Us kids would run to the house too when the gypsies came. The dogs were trying to get under the house as we were trying to get into the house. It was tit for tat on who got there first.